Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation. We have negative 1 to the power z equals i. I've already done one take on this video but I made a mistake so I'm gonna post it uh, as a members only video. If you wanted to join my channel which is by the way, um, I'm talking about cyber math. I don't think I activated memberships for this channel, A plus B I. But anyways, if you want to go ahead and check out uh, membership options, you can do so by clicking the join button on my other channel. I'm going to share the link down below. But anyways, hopefully this will be the correct version and you all will get to see this. So we have negative 1 to the power z equals i. And to be able to solve this equation, we're going to use exponential forms or polar forms. First of all, notice that negative 1 can be written as e to the power i pi, right? If you think about negative 1 in the argand plane, which is kind of like a fancy word for the coordinate plane, where we plot complex numbers as two-dimensional vectors, uh, we can basically plot negative 1 here. It's going to be on the negative side of the real axis. This is the imaginary. So, and it'll make pi radians with the uh, x-axis. But pi is not the only angle because you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi and so on and so forth. So it's better to write this as plus 2 pi n with a multiple of 2 pi in more general form. So that is how we can write negative 1 as a complex number in polar form. What about i? i is going to appear here it's going to be in the imaginary, on the imaginary axis, and it'll make a pi over 2 radians with the x-axis. Okay, again, real and imaginary. i is basically an imaginary number, but also a complex number. It's basically the basic basis for complex numbers. So if you are new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics of complex numbers. And I'm planning to make a series of videos the, to supplement those lecture videos because I think extra practice would be a really good thing. All right, so hopefully you're going to see that soon and I will announce it as well. So I can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2, but again for the same reason we should be able to add multiples of 2 pi to this, right? Now let's go ahead and put these two together and include the z in there because I find this equation interesting because negative 1 is at the base as you know, on my other channel, Cyber Math, I made a video recently about the integral of an interesting function, which is negative 1 to the power x dx. And then there we do see a bunch of discontinuities. Obviously, when the base is a negative number, exponential functions act crazy. That's why we have this requirement that, okay, base should be greater than 0. Okay? So, but this is the complex word. So... Welcome to A plus B I one more time if I didn't say it for the first time. So now let's go ahead and plug this in. We have negative 1 to the power z equals i. Negative 1 will be replaced with e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n. Then we're going to raise it to the power z, which is just going to bring an extra factor. And i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Great. We have e on both sides, so we can natural log, get rid of the e. And then, of course, i cancels out, and then I'm going to set these equal to each other. Pi plus 2 pi n multiplied by z equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Awesome. If you can also take out a pi here, take out pi, you're going to get 1 plus 2 n z. And here, if you take out pi, you're going to get 1 half plus 2 k. And pi also cancels out because pi is not 0, as you know. And from here, we can get z. We can write it as 2k plus 1 half divided by 2n plus 1. And obviously multiplying the top and bottom by 2 would actually be a good thing. So let's do it. We get 4k plus 1 divided by 4n plus 2. Uh-oh, an interesting scenario, right? Now, we're going to go ahead and check our work, obviously, because there are two schools of thought. One says... There should not be an n in this equation. You don't need it, especially on the variable side. And there are good reasons behind it. And some people say that, no, no, you do need two integers. By the way, did I say k and n are integers? 
I apologize if I didn't say that before. But you probably guessed it, right? So what does that mean? It means that I can kind of verify, like use different values. For example, if k is zero and n is zero at the same time, then I get z equals one half. Is there a solution? Let's find out. Negative one to the power one half means the square roots of negative one, but if you go with the principal value, that'll be i, because i is the number whose square equals negative one. In other words, i squared equals negative one. If you square root both sides, i is the square root of negative one. I say the square root because of the principal value. Otherwise, I would say, hey, there are two numbers whose square is negative one, i and negative i. Obviously, you don't want to get negative i from here, so how do you specify that, right? So, if we use different values, for example, what if k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 0? From here we get z equals 5 over 2. So do you think if I raise negative 1 to the power 5 halves, that'll be i? Let's find out. Negative 1 to the power 5 halves can be interpreted in two different ways. I can think of it as first raise negative 1 to the fifth power and then to the power 1 half because 5 and 2 have no common factor, so I'm allowed to take it out, I think right? And then this would mean negative 1 to the fifth power, which is negative 1, and then negative 1 to power 1 half is obviously i because it's the principal value, right? Even though it might be a little ambiguous, uh, for some people that seems to work. So what is, it, what is wrong with this approach then, right? So here's the thing. Negative 1 to the power 5 halves could also be interpreted as negative 1 to the power one half to the power five. And again, uh, what specifies that we should only go with the principal values? And of course, you can kind of play with the values of k and n and then kind of find out uh, what uh, is working and what is not working, okay? And if k, um, no, one thing I want you to notice that 4k plus one is always odd and 4n plus two is always even. So these two will never have a common factor. Therefore, we don't need to worry about simplifying this as a fraction, okay? But let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha's result because we're gonna check it against ours and see Wolfram Alpha can come up with the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. So Wolfram Alpha says the solution is the following. Uh-oh, that looks a little different, doesn't it? What was my solution? Well, I said that I'm gonna get something like 4n plus one over 4k plus 2, right? So that means that because when you write this, uh, 4n plus 1 divided by 2, you're totally ignoring the k. So basically, looks like Wolfram Alpha wants k to be 0 all the time. In other words, you do not need a k in this equation. That's the general idea uh, or general uh, opinion, I think. And that basically means that because negative 1 is at the base, when you write it, as a complex number, uh, you should probably not use the k value. Anyways, something to think about. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.